Guten Tag, ladies and gentlemen. We are looking at Johann Wolfgang von Goethe's The Sorrows of Young Werther today. It's all about this young man, blue jacket, yellow trousers, top boots and yellow whisket. This is yellow, right? I don't want any discussions later on. Werther is the hero, or at least the protagonist, of this epistolary novel, accompanied by Charlotte, the eldest daughter of a widowed civil servant. She's got black eyes and is generally called Lotte. Lotte is very nearly engaged to be married to Albert, who is so exceedingly boring as not to even have locks and far more boring clothes than Werther. The year is 1771 and uh, young Master Werther is new to a nameless little town that bears many similarities to Wetzlar in central Germany, where Goethe himself lived at the time. Just as the author, Werther stems from a respectable and rich family and doesn't really have to worry a lot about earning his living. As a matter of fact, he doesn't know exactly what to do with his life, which is why he decides to do an internship. Hard to believe nowadays that there were these people without any orientation in the 18th century. As a matter of fact, he needs to sort out some inheritance matter for his mother in the town, and furthermore, he's just broken the heart of a young woman, so what better to do but start afresh in a new little town? Even better than the little town, however, he likes the neighboring village of Walheim, where he likes to spend time, sit under a lime tree, where he gets affordable coffee, and there are so wonderfully simple people around, running around barefoot like in Africa. Unfortunately, tourism and photography haven't been invented yet, so he sits there and paints them, amuses himself with the simplicity, and reads Homer. You know, the kind of thing you do on a lazy summer afternoon. And if one turns around in Walheim, there's a fantastic panorama, nature, where he goes for walks frequently. At a certain point, however, the entertainment value of the surrounding nature is used up and the high earners among the local youth are organizing a ball, which Werther intends to visit. On the way to the ball, he has promised to pick up a young woman, so he sits outside in the coach, honks, but she doesn't come out, so he goes in. Which is when, for the first time, he meets Lotte, surrounded by her siblings, for whom she is cutting a piece of bread each for dinner. When he sees her standing there cutting bread, Werther is smitten by this wonderful young woman. She seems to like him too, in a way. So they get talking, they make their way to the ball, and they connect. They dance, they spend the evening together, and even the couples around them start to notice how well they are getting on with each other, until at some point a friend of Lotte's comes up to her and goes, Remember Albert, playfully, then leaves. Oh, you promised that dance to me! And Werther goes, uh, so who's Albert? And she replies, that's the young man with whom I am as good as engaged to be married. And as if the author wanted to make a point, a thunderstorm suddenly appears. There's thunder and lightning. They walk over to the window and look out, and the name Klopstock is dropped. They look at each other and find their kindred spirits. Uh, good evening. My name is Klopstock. Lotte and Werther are referring to my ode The Rite of Spring at this point, which is about the exhilarating experience of a thunderstorm in spring, a drop of water sitting on the brim of a bucket, the question whether or not beetles have a soul, and if our house is going to be struck by lightning or not. Thank you for your attention. No, thank you, Mr. Klopstock. Anyway, Werther is completely in love with Lotte, so much so that he's hanging around at her place all the time and even playing with her eight younger siblings, which is quite a feat to do. Everybody on Werther! She finds that funny and enjoys his visits. She enjoys talking to him and going for walks together in the countryside. At some point, however, Albert comes back and Lotte goes, Ah, Albert, Albert, Albert! And Werther, <clears throat> Albert has come and I will go. I'm an adult after all. I'll just have to pull myself together. Uh, Albert? Yes? So what are you doing in life? Oh, thank you, I'm fine. I'm staying in town now. I've finally got a fantastic job. Ah, yes, uh -huh, okay. Mm -hmm. Tell me, is this your pistol? Werther playfully puts it to his temple and Albert goes, Cut this crap, Werther. It's okay, it's not charged. I don't find this funny and I don't understand why anybody could be as stupid as to kill themselves. And Werther drops the pistol slowly and says, Stupid? This is not about stupidity. Human nature has its limits. I can endure happiness, suffering, pain to a certain degree, but that's it. How can you be stupid if you finish life then? But Albert goes, yes, no, yes, no, I'm going. And Lotte goes too. Well, Werther only says he'd be going, but he doesn't go. And one evening, the three of them go for a walk in the garden together, chatting away all the time. And um, Lotte goes, I wonder how it's going to be in the afterlife. Am I going to meet my mother then? And Werther is so enthralled by her musings that he drops to his knees, takes her hand and goes, Lotte, 
we will meet again, meet here and beyond. Then he walks away. And she goes, uh, where's he gone all of a sudden? How would I know, but good riddance, we are going home alone for a change. And she goes, ooh. So now the second part of the novel follows. Finally, Werther leaves the little town which his mother had wished all the time, and he works at some duke's court for a civil servant. Ah, Werther, here you go. This is the little essay you've written. I've corrected it. Would you please do it again with less adjectives? Oh, I've got an appointment. I need to go. And Werther goes, bloody civil service. I'm going mad. Fortunately, however, he makes the acquaintance of a very nice young lady, Fräulein von Bay, an aristocrat with almost the same qualities as Lotte. Also, he gets to know a certain count with whom he spends a lot of time. So he's visiting this count, oopsie, some evening when the count goes, Werther, I can't begin to tell you how much I enjoy your company, really. It's just that a couple of aristocratic friends of mine are coming over to watch football just now, so being a commoner, you need to go now, please. Sorry, come again. Yeah, I know this is so backward. Please do not let this get to you. I find the common man like yourself fantastic. Everybody should have one. So off he walks and Fräulein von B has another look around, but then walks off quickly too. And Werther is completely put out and flabbergasted, especially as he's just learned that Lotte and Albert have got married without telling him. So he quits his job at the court and wanders around aimlessly. Uh, I'm going to war now! But a friend warns him that wars are not what they used to be and rather uncomfortable these days. So he then decides not to go to war, but go back to the little town where Lotte and Albert are living now and visits Lotte frequently, again and again, even though there she's married now. So that people are starting to talk and Albert starts to find this inappropriate. Then Werther's alone again, he goes into nature, but even in Walheim, nothing is as it once was. One of the children of the simple people has died, another guy killed himself, and one evening, when he's on his way back home from Walheim, he meets an absolute stranger crossing his path. He's staring at the ground all the time, and Werther, uh, what are you doing here? I'm searching flowers for my precious! Tomorrow is the 1st of December. You're hardly going to find any flowers right now. I need flowers for my precious! It's all right, and he walks off. It turns out that this madman used to be a secretary of Lotte's father who fell in love with Lotte and then lost his marbles because of that infatuation. And now look what has become of him. Shortly before Christmas, Werther is visiting Lotte again, as is his habit. As television hasn't been invented yet, he's reading poetry to her, namely his own translation of the forged a Gaelic epic Ossian, which was very hip at the time. The time of my fading is near, the blast that shall scatter my leaves. Tomorrow shall the traveller come, he that saw me in my beauty shall come. His eyes will search the field, but they will not find me. And he's really upset, and he's, she's upset, and goes, Please stop this, I'm all wet with tears already. Uh, he's completely bananas, and by accident they kiss. <coughs> ah! And she runs away, locks the door after her, and orders him not to come back to her until Christmas. Werther is down and out now. He doesn't really know what to do. He goes into nature again. Then he goes into town and pays his debts. Then he returns to nature. Finally, he goes home to his room. This is his room with his desk where he writes all the letters. It's an epistolary novel after all. Here's this collection of reclam books, by the way, from which he chooses Lessing's Emilia Galotti. Opens it, then dresses in the old clothes he wore when he met Lotte for the first time. Blue jacket, yellow trousers, yellow whisket and top boots. Then he borrows a pistol from Albert, puts it to his temple on the 23rd of December, shortly before midnight, and pulls the trigger. <laughs> on the next morning, his manservant finds him. Good morning! Ah! When he's still living a little, he gives severe traumas to Albert, who comes to see him. Ah! And Lotte, even though she doesn't come to see him. Ah! As well as all of Lotte's siblings. And then he dies around midday. They bury him quickly, actually, in the graveyard, because Lotte's father puts in a good word for him. Normally, this wouldn't have been possible for a suicide. There is, however, no priest present. At least, he's in nature now, where he always wanted to be. And this, dear congregation, was the end of the sorrows of young Werther. <laughs> Thank you.